Hi, I'm Mark Passwaters, the publisher of AggieL.com, and welcome to Three Quick Things for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. Thing number one, I'm going to talk a little bit about A&M's uh, potential draft picks for the 2019 draft. I'm going to start with Jay Sternberger, who, uh, like I said earlier in tidbits last Friday, I've never seen opinions run as hot and cold on somebody as they are with Sternberger. Uh, I've seen him as a first-round draft pick in a couple of mock drafts. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah of NFL.com put his top 50 prospects out this morning, and Sternberger wasn't in it. I just really don't know where he's going to go. If you take a look at just ability to catch the football, he's great. He looks like Jordan Reed of the Redskins or several other very, very good uh, tight ends out there whose primary job is not to block but to catch. But Reed was a third-round draft pick, and Sternberger is smaller than Reed is, and he's faster, but... Sternberg still doesn't block. There are schemes in the NFL where he will fit very, very well. I just don't know where he's going to be as a draft pick. So when we sit there and we say Dalen Mack's going to probably be the first guy taken in the NFL draft, it's kind of a crapshoot because Sternberger still could go very high. It's just who's going to take him, where, and why. Um, the Senior Bowl weigh-in was today. Eric McCoy came in at 6'3 and a half. 299 pounds. That's 16 pounds lower than he was listed when he left A&M. There was only one offensive lineman that weighed in at the Senior Bowl more than 300 pounds. So apparently they're looking for quickness as opposed to size. They think they can probably get strength elsewhere. Maybe this is something to watch as a future trend for the NFL because we've seen guys get up to 315, 320 pounds, but that seems to be the limit. Now maybe they're starting to come back down. Anyway, just something to take a look at. Dale and Mack, by the way, weighed in at six foot one, three twenty seven. So that's pretty darn big. But he can also handle it because he's been a whole lot bigger. Uh, two today, we'll find out who's going to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, some of you may not care, but this is a thing for me because I'm a big baseball fan. And if I were to have a vote for the Baseball Hall of Fame, I would have put my votes in for Mariano Rivera. Roy Holiday, Billy Wagner, and Edgar Martinez, and Mike Messina. Messina, being a former Oriole, maybe I'm a little biased, but he was a dominant pitcher in an era where there really weren't very many because hitters were just absolutely killing it, largely due to steroids. He only won 20 games once, never won a Cy Young, but he was consistently very good. I can see a debate against him, but if you're going to change the the way pitchers are now judged, because 300 wins is almost an impossibility the way things are, then Messina kind of deserves serious consideration. Wagner was one of the do most dominant pitchers I ever saw, and, you know, I, I think it's kind of a disappointment that he doesn't get more consideration than he does, probably around 15% of the vote. But maybe he can get in with a veterans committee, because if Lee Smith gets in and Harold Baines gets in, then... Why shouldn't Wagner? Anyway, you'll notice that Bobby or Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are not on my list. Oh, well. And number three, in the category of you knew it was coming, there has been a lawsuit filed over the blown pass interference call of the NFC Championship game between the Saints and the Rams. And here is the exact wording of the Saints ticket holder lawsuit. They are looking for... Uh, damages against the NFL and Roger Goodell for mental anguish and emotional trauma, loss of faith in the NFL, loss of enjoyment of life, loss of entertainment, and distrust of the game. See you tomorrow.